it's Rhino gear, Rhino ramps that I've, I've had for a couple of years now. I just wanted to talk about a couple of their strong points and also some weak points too on them. Um, a lot of the ramps were metal. The issue with that is they're only as good as <laughs> clearances that allow with the metal ones. Typically they're pretty steep so you'd have a lot of issues with low profile vehicles or things just hitting the fenders. They tend to pool water if you were to leave them outside and they rust up pretty quick and obviously you don't want rust on something that's going to be supporting the weight of a vehicle. While the metal ones were kind of traditionally what people would use, these Rhino gear, just the plastic styles like this, whether they're a one piece or they have like a removable ramp section, have definitely taken over. A couple things I should mention right away about the plastic, I do think it's a superior material. It's going to hold its form much better. Are getting something that's made in the United States, you know, a lot of polymers are high quality, especially when they're made first world countries. I don't have too much suspect whether they were made or manufactured correctly. And they're also going to be a lot more compact, light to store. I just store mine on a top shelf out of the way in the workshop where with the metal ones inevitably end up getting stored outside all the time because they are so heavy and bulky. There's a lot of images floating around in the reviews of people having these things crack. That's probably the biggest downfall and I think you can attribute that to couple things. First of all, being plastic, it's not going to deal with the temperature extremes as well. Well, they're black, of course, so <laughs> if you leave them out in the sun, guess what? They are going to be nice and warm. I don't think they're going to melt or anything like that on you. Um, I've used them plenty of on hot days. It's definitely not something you want to leave in the sun for the reasons of UV degrading the plastics with that extra heat on them constantly, especially if you were to go from them being nice and warm and then pulling a vehicle up on them. I wouldn't be surprised if that would kind of extenuate the stresses on them. And then also in the cold. I do not use mine in the cold at all. I live in Minnesota, which is a fairly cold climate. I would not trust these things if they are in a below zero setting because I don't trust most plastics when they get cold. If they do crack instantly when frozen, there would be a lot more complaints about it, but it, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. And honestly, I'm not going to work want to work on a vehicle outside in the middle of winter anyways. It's not a huge disadvantage. The one thing I would just say is you got to make sure you store these inside. If you are going to leave them out for a little bit, just make sure they're not in the sun. How light they are so it can be a disadvantage in the sense that if you are on a fairly smooth surface, they tend to scoot forward a little bit. A couple years back, I put in one of the bays of my garage, the race deck, plastic tiling over my cement. And the main reason why I did that was water would pool in the winter, you know, they'd be frozen. Combine that with something like these rhino ramps, and they're just going to slide all over on you. It does not work on something very smooth. I would guess it's even an issue with the epoxy poured floors. Think about definitely adding some extra grit or those flakes. If you do pour an epoxy floor, the incident that kind of prompted me to want to make this video today. I primarily use these outside. It had recently rained. Both the tires were slick on the vehicle that I was pulling up and the driveway was slick as well. It wasn't a big deal. It pushed them forward a couple of inches. What had happened was these had scooted forward a couple of inches and on this side, you know, everything looks fine. Um, but you can see, obviously they kind of caught in that crack between the asphalt and the concrete joint. That little hill there you can see on the passenger side and this isn't something i immediately noticed i got a huge issue like the, the whole ramp side of this is not making contact with the ground this is definitely something I'd, I'd look out for i suspect a lot of the images i see of these things being cracked do have to do with not using level or flat surfaces below it caution if these things are going to slide forward at all on you making sure that where you set them you're still allowing for a flat surface so they scoot forward a couple inches. I've noticed this to be particularly bad in front wheel drive and I do like these over the metal ones because they have a much larger lip. Put pieces of plywood or something kind of as a stopper on the metal ones because they had a very small stop. Fairly easy to accidentally drive over your ramps where um, these plastic ones I've, I've never observed that issue. That might be the trade-off is because they are so light. I kind of thought about you know if, if there's a way to tie these down putting some sandbags inside of them and something like that for the occasional use these really do come in handy and i think they're a lot quicker than having to use jack stands as far as the safety factor i've never been too concerned about them it seems like if they were to crack they wouldn't crack in a catastrophic manner it'd be more like when you pull the vehicle off you would observe it typically when i pull the vehicle up i'll go until i'm no longer inclining i'll basically stop as soon as i get on to the flat upper section get out and I just visually inspect that everything you know is parallel both sides are more or less down the center 
nice and aligned. I make sure that one isn't farther forward than the other. Mentally get an idea, okay, I have about four more inches to roll forward before pull the vehicle up, especially with front wheel. You see today on this passenger side, somehow I was able to get that weight just a little bit too far forward, whether it was because I was pushing on that stop at the end or just how the asphalt is a little bit curved there. It really does not look like a safe condition. I decided I'm going to let the vehicle sit on it overnight and see how bad it is when I pull it off. This is a catastrophic failure. I'm not going to want to use it either way. I probably should be inspecting these things. It seems like if the damage is already done, I might as well wait a little bit, gain some confidence, pulling the vehicle off tomorrow and I'll take a look and see whether we have any crack. This is a caravan, so I think they're around 4,000 pounds. In theory, we're probably putting about 1,000 pounds on these right now. And they're rated to 12,000. I don't know if they really mean 6,000 each or if they mean it's rated to a 12,000 vehicle, but only using two of them. Probably safe to say they're saying the vehicle can be up to 12,000 pounds, therefore you need four of them or only two on the ground. So really they're only rated to 3,000 each, which is still a pretty good safety factor because we're only applying about a third of that. Um, you can see here that I got a pretty good gap going on. And about right here is a solid connection in the back where they flex. And yeah, it seems about right there that it gets solid again. You can see you got the same thing here. Uh, not as bad. Uh, but again, pretty loose. Uh, it actually goes to that joint. And that might speak to the design being a little more robust. A couple of things I wanted to mention about these is um, there are different revisions of it. Some are going to have different weights and they'll have like a like there's a diamond pattern one. Um, and then there's also, I think it's sold a couple times. Um, so you'll see a couple different versions out there. Um, the ones that I have here have that single rubber tab on both the top and the bottom. So just to conclude this, uh, I did pull the vehicle off and I actually brought them into the garage, closed the garage door, turned off all the lights, and I took both a normal flashlight and one of those UV flashlights to these. And I really didn't see any cracks or stress points on them. So I, I think they've been designed with that kind of three-piece mechanism to have a decent amount of give. Um, so I, I think the moral of the story here is they are going to be survivable in this type of a scenario. Obviously, you'd want to avoid it, but I, I really don't see any huge cause of concern. Yeah, so to just making sure you have these things lined up in all three orientations i'm going to keep using them i think they're still pretty decent